What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the We Run On Coffee podcast. I'm Erica. And I'm Marissa. And I'm Taylor. And we have a new guest. Taylor's here. <laughs> Taylor is coming at us all the way from LA. How's the weather out in LA today? It's very hot today. I got a little sunburn. Wow. <laughs> a little We're, like, bit. freezing our butts out over here. <laughs> I I you're it. freezing. It was 80 in Ohio today. Okay, oh, actually, that's crazy. true, but I am sitting in my AC, my AC house, so <laughs> who am I to complain? That's so true. It was 80 in Ohio today. What a weird time, because I'm going to New York next week. It's going to be in the high 60s. Mm-hmm. I'm like, okay. <laughs> anyway, I want to start with our first thing that we always start with, which is what is everybody drinking today? What do you guys got? Water. <laughs> I'm born today. I was just okay. telling them both. I had an apple cider on the last episode and I feel like I had so much sugar in my apple cider that True. I needed just water and I don't have any other drinks in my house. <laughs> Understandable. Taylor, what do you got? You got anything over there? Right now I have water, but right before this, I was having some Starbucks cold brew. <laughs> Ooh. Okay, you guys listening. For Taylor, it's daytime, and for us, it's nighttime, which is so <laughs> funny. It's like that weird part of the time difference. Like, usually it's fine, but there's a weird part of the time difference where it's either really early or really late. So yeah. Marissa and I, it's 8 p.m. For Taylor, it's 5, so it's really funny. Um, okay, a Starbucks cold brew. Taylor's a Starbucks girly. <laughs> I feel like I am. Brew, you like Starbucks. Only the cold brew, though. I don't like yeah. the lattes. They're too, like... That's sugary fair. like milky no yeah they are really milky that's like their thing yeah um okay i have a random drink i was telling marissa i went to the store before this to buy a drink because it would be fun so i'm pulling up the pictures so i can tell you guys bolt house farms had a buy one get one free drinks which i feel like buy one get one free you never see these days not in this economy <laughs> so i picked up two drinks the first one is my green goddess this is my favorite one i don't know you guys have maybe seen me drink this but green it's like my goodness favorite one. we've learned oh my god yes <laughs> i do that every time you're thinking of, on the podcast you're thinking of trader joe's like the salad dressing oh is that what it's from i was like why do i do it every time okay wait that makes sense okay not salad dressing this is green goodness drink but then the other one i bought that i got for free because i was like i might as well try this this is interesting it is bolt house farms also but this is a protein drink which i never get but it's a cold brew flavor and it's with oat milk oh. it's an oat milk okay. protein plus so i'll let you guys know if it's good i know you you both are like an oat milk girly i feel mm-hmm. like so this is perfect. <laughs> Love this for you guys. I'm an almond milk girly now, but we don't have to talk about it. Don't want to make Marissa mad. <laughs> you're not going to make me mad. It's I'm just, just kidding. there I'm is an oat milk supremacy and you're just not a part of it. <laughs> Facts. Yeah. Anyway, that's what I'm drinking is my green goodness <laughs> drink. So anyways, let's talk about what we're looking forward to coming up before we get into like the actual interview so i guess honestly i'll just start <laughs> okay Why not? i'll just let, i'll just allow myself to start okay <laughs> i am i don't have a lot coming up in the next couple weeks but my most looking forward to is that i'm going to new york city this week and i'm leaving in two days and i'm not ready so oh. that's exciting <laughs> i just started packing today and i'm kind of a mess and then the other thing that i'm excited about is something i talked about in the pod a couple weeks ago which is we're going to marissa's brother-in-law that sounds weird to say about a kid but whatever marissa's brother-in-law kaden which he's 16 question mark how old is he yeah 16 16 sounds right (laughs) i don't know he's in he's in high school but anyway he plays football on the football team and we were supposed to go to one of his games recently which i don't think i ever updated on this but we didn't go and also hurricane helene hit at the same exact time and it was actually pretty bad in ohio so glad we didn't go but i will be going to that in a couple weeks so i'm excited to watch some high school football it's like so nostalgic vibes which yeah. is exciting me and so Kyle, Marissa, what are you looking forward me to and oh go ahead. actually just talking about football i was like should we go to a high school yeah. football game in the area yes. like <laughs> soon should. and he said we should but that i guess would be really cute i'll go on my updates or my looking yeah. ahead so actually this weekend erica instead of going to new york with you like i was going yeah. to i'm gonna be going? taking a little trip to ohio no, you're not. For, what? <laughs> for a friend's birthday party. So what in I'm, the heck? That's I'm so fun. leaving on Friday after I get off work, and then I'm leaving very early Sunday morning. So it's just going to be a real quick trip, but I'm going to her birthday party on Saturday night. So Is this a friend we know on the pod? Yeah, not one that's been on the pod, but right. I'm going to see Courtney and uh, Jada that have <gasps> been guests, awesome. but it's yeah. for Jennifer's birthday. Okay, I remember her. Yeah. That's fun. So I'm going to so see exciting. her. 
And then the week after that, I'm going to Boston and I'm going to take a day trip to Salem for Kyle and I's 10 year anniversary. Whoa. Whoa. 10 years <laughs> is wild. I I'm know. Shook. Actually, a week from tomorrow, as we're recording this, it will be our one year wedding anniversary. Yes. And then the Friday after that. So Monday would be our anniversary for our wedding. And then Friday is the anniversary of us dating for dating. 10 years. So <gasps> 10 years is wild. I know. I'm really excited. But one other thing, I'm going to do three things instead of just yeah, two do it. that I'm excited for. Tomorrow after work, there's a pop up Halloween bar near like oh. where we live. And we're going to go mm-hmm. and just like check out the atmosphere and maybe get like one drink each and see what it's about. Cute. So I'm really excited oh, to do cute. that tomorrow, too. Very spooky updates. I so know. Fitting for you. <laughs> Love that. All right, Taylor, what do you got? Are you looking forward to anything coming up? Doesn't have to be in two weeks. It could be like anything at all. Okay, I would say probably just soaking up the sun that I have here because <laughs> oh, I'm so, so used good. to like going into like winter at this point or fall yes. winter and it being so cold that I'm like, whoa, I can still just like be outside, be by the pool. Like, that's it's so crazy. true. Yeah, so yeah, I'm that's just going to soak one. it up. <laughs> I love that. We just, well, as you can tell, it's very dark in our houses, not only because it's late, but because of freaking winter, like it's getting dark so early. <laughs> so I don't love that. But also we just did, it hasn't come out yet, but we just did an episode on seasonal depression and I'm like, Ugh, I'm re- I'm not ready for that to hit me, you know? So I'm jealous to say the least. <laughs> anyway, as we are wrapping up this little chit chat we're gonna get started with our interview with Taylor and I'm so excited it's so weird to call it an interview it is technically but I feel like it's just a fun chat and I love doing I it so we're gonna start out with just like some who is Taylor questions get to know Taylor which is exciting <laughs> I know and it's exciting because I get to ask these questions I now know, to you it's me. and Erica's asked them to both well to my first friend and then I got to like kind of facilitate the interview for the last one true so I'm excited for this one this is gonna be an episode of me just like popping in here and there basically because the majority of it is going to be Erica asking you questions but I'm excited to get to know you more so the first question is so Taylor and Erica what is your relationship to each other for the people that don't know we're besties that's what I was gonna say (laughs) we're besties bestie girls is like something I feel like we actually always say unironically though like we always say bestie girl and I love it it, it's like ironic but not ironic it is. It is. It is. It is ironic and unironic at the same time, but it's always like my bestie girl. Yeah, yes. we're besties. So the next question is then, how did you meet? And then also like, how long ago did you meet? Like, what was oh, the circumstances yeah. and everything behind it? I'll let Taylor take this one since she <laughs> is our guest, but also I feel like she has a cool perspective because she kind of initiated our friendship. Oh, I did. Yeah. It's so random. Like, I always forget this I know. Is how we met, but we met on Instagram because I yeah. DM'd, I slid in Erica's DMs. <laughs> she did. She slid right in the DMs, baby. I That's did. That's so funny. It was because this influencer that we both followed had reposted Erica's story. And this influencer is like, she lives in like New York City now, but like, it's She's not been. like a local influencer. Yeah. It's Brooke yeah. Michio, right? Yeah, Brooke Michio. Love. Okay, that's what I thought. She posted, yeah. she reposted Erica's story, and Erica's story was like a laptop with like stickers on it. And one yes. of the stickers was like Rock City, which was a church that we yeah. both went to. And so I saw it. I was like, whoa, I wonder. And I think you had like an Ohio State sticker or something. Yeah, something, something like related. that. Yeah. And then yeah. I like went to your profile, and I was like, oh my gosh, she lives in Columbus. And then I saw that you um, had a YouTube channel, I think is what made me be like, oh my oh, gosh. Oh, yeah. And then I was like, oh my gosh, we're like the same. And I think you had a YouTube channel at that point too, Yeah, right? I did. Okay, okay. Yeah. So I like DM'd you That's and funny. then we ended up just like going thrifting for our first hangout. <laughs> yes, we did. Yeah. Which was so weird because I was like nervous. I was just like, I don't know, this girl's from the internet. Like she's from my Instagram. She looks really cool and nice. She also has YouTube. So I thought that was cool. Yeah. But I was like really scared. Um, I just looked up. I, I don't remember like exactly when it was that this all happened. But Instagram, I don't know if you guys have seen this, has a new thing called shared activity. So if you go on anyone you follow's page and click the three dots for settings, it says see your shared activity. And so this is what it tells me about Taylor and I. Taylor followed me in November of 2019. <laughs> and I followed Taylor back in November of 2019. So it had to be in like 2019 or 2020 that we, it had to be 2019. I feel like that makes yeah. sense. November, 2019. Aww. And yeah. then we probably first hung out like early in that next year. Yeah. So yes. like, so, wild. so like late 2019. So it's like, yeah, been like five years that you've like <gasps> known each other. Oh my gosh. So crazy. Wow. I guess. 
that's, yeah, so that's really weird you never think about how long you know someone until you uh-uh. talk about it and then it's like whoa yeah Aww. yeah Yep, we went to Uptown Cheapskate. I remember I brought Angela's <laughs> sister with me too. That was really cute. Aww, you said so for random, safety. But... No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, I was like I was like honestly more for socially. I'm like I'm nervous. That's so, <laughs> so funny because I don't remember being nervous at all. I think I was like cool, and then that's I awesome. just showed up. That's yeah, that kind of tracks. I feel like that ma- that would make sense. The duality of women: one's terrified yes. and one's ready to go. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That's so, so true. Funny. I was also nervous too. I think because Taylor was a little bit older than me. She's really not <laughs> that much older than me in the grand scheme of life. But in college, I felt like, oh my gosh, anyone above my grade, like my grade oh. or whatever, in college, I was like, what if she's cooler than me? Like, what if she's like, I don't know. I was just scared of her. So that's so funny because now I wouldn't. I don't even think about her age anymore. I was actually yeah. just talking about that with somebody today because like. Now that, like, we're all out of college, we're all older, like, we're growing up or whatever, it's so weird because, like, age was, like, such, like, a number. Like, it really was a number, like, when you're younger because, like, one year difference is, like, you're in a different stage of life. But now, like, 20s and 30s, you're basically at the same stage of life throughout that whole time. Like, of course, you could be at different stages. Like, some people could have kids, some people could have a house. But, like, 20s and 30s, you're honestly just, like, doing the same things. It's just, like, you might be 10 years older than me. (laughs) Yeah, yeah exactly so true it's really honestly kind of weird yeah but yeah like that because of that i never think about age anymore i'm just like oh you can look at someone at a certain life stage and be like oh cool they're in the same stage as me or not yeah so Aww. weird but um we know that you're tuning in from la because i said that earlier so spoiler <laughs> but uh where did you grow up because it wasn't la i know that <laughs> it was not la i grew up in the <laughs> middle of nowhere in ohio and then mm-hmm. i moved to columbus ohio for college to go to ohio state Yes. And okay. So this is a fun question that I did repeat from some of Marissa's guest (laughs) episodes too, because I just love this one. When you were a kid, did you ever have somewhere that you were like, oh my gosh, when I grow up, I really want to live blank, like a certain dream location that you want to live? Yeah. I don't remember having any like specific location. I think it was because I didn't really like travel a ton or anything growing Mm. up. Yeah. But I always remember, like, the older I got, the more I just hated living in the middle of nowhere. And I was like, I yes. want to live in a city so bad. And so that was my goal was to, like, live in a city. And now here I you are that. in a big <laughs> city. A big <laughs> city. Yeah. Literally. Honestly, like, one of one of the largest, like, well-known cities, I feel like, in the U.S. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. really crazy. That I relate crazy. to that. I felt the same way. I was just like, I don't know what I want, but it isn't to stay here. <laughs> That's what I knew. Yeah. So, okay, Marissa, do you want to take my next two questions? I feel like we can alternate a little. Of course. So I don't know you at all as a kid. Erica didn't know you (laughs) at all as a kid. So these next two are like, when you were little, what were your hobbies when you were growing up? And you can even talk about like what your hobbies are now too. True. Yeah, I feel like growing up, my hobbies were like outdoor things because we live like in the country. So it's like going on bike rides and... Um, I was a competitive baton twirler too so I would like practice yes. all the time uh-huh. and so that was like a huge thing um, we had a pool so just like going swimming and Aww. stuff like that I remember I loved reading and then I loved yeah. YouTube like I would watch so much YouTube which inspired me to start my YouTube channel when I was like Aww. 13 or 14 I just like learned how to like edit and film <laughs> and kind of yeah. just like taught myself so I was obsessed with YouTube Aww. I didn't know you had a pool. That is so awesome. And also, that's so cute because I had the same kind of experience with YouTube or the same, like, I don't know, opening to it or whatever. Mm-hmm. I just, like, was a watcher first and I was like, I could make a lip sync video. I'm like, it can't be that hard. <laughs> so I started around the same age and all my stuff was just, like, lip syncing videos that I edited really cringy, but it was so fun. <laughs> that's and that yeah, was, like, absolutely. a good hobby because it takes a good amount of time, but it's, like, you get a reward at the end of all the work. Have any yeah, of those so like hobbies good. stuck around? Like obviously YouTube has probably stuck around, but is there anything else or any new hobbies you've developed like later as like an adult? I would say probably working out became more of a thing for mm. me um, because I was always like a competitive baton twirler until my senior year of high school. So I was always like wow. training like in the gym and always, I guess, like in shape from that. But then my senior year when I like stopped, I was like, okay, I like want to try just like lifting and like doing different workouts. And that's when I got more into stuff like that. So like taking workout classes, doing like weight training, um, I've done like cycling. So just different things like that. So I feel like it kind of played off of that. And it was just me trying to like fill that gap of like, okay, like I want to still be active. So that's been a big thing. I've been injured for the past year. So I haven't gotten to work out in literally a year. But that's so sad before last year (laughs) it's been like a huge thing that I've kept up with 
Aw. Um, are you a cycle hater like Erica? No, I love cycling. Yeah. I did it a lot last year because, well, last year I was overcoming an ankle injury. <laughs> so, oh my gosh. So, so that random. was like one of the things that I was able to do. My old roommate was, or she's a physical therapist. And so she was like, you could do cycling, like try it out. And so I tried it out and I actually really liked it. It, it really like took my energy out when I would be like anxious or like mm-hmm. had a long work day. I would just book a class on class pass and just go cycle and I would feel way better. Yes, uh, I you agree. guys actually you two have similar workout things to each other. I feel like you guys like the same amount of stuff. Like the same the things you both tell me that you like working out wise are the same as each other. Aww, I put that cool. in the most confusing way possible. <laughs> <laughs> as you know, I'm a cycle hater. So yeah, yeah. she is. Not that's me. why. That's why I had to ask. I know that Erica. Of course. She's only done her one class, so she yeah. definitely needs to give it another try. I could give it another try. But I, sure could. I was just curious what your thoughts were on it. Yeah. <laughs> so true um so last question for like this intro section as a kid what did you want to be when you grew up I feel like it was like changing a lot but I have this memory of like when I was younger I would convince my little sister she's a year and a half younger than me so I would always convince her to play this game I made up called life and literally in the game I would like own a bunch of businesses and she would work for me (laughs) stop that's so crazy wait that is so cute like that is so wild how that played out in your life it's so funny because I know it never clicked until like the end of college that I was like oh I want to like own a business but like I just remember I wanted to like I ran like the hair salon and she was like my employee and then (laughs) stuff like that yeah and so that definitely should have alerted me that I should be an entrepreneur (laughs) but I wasn't I didn't even understand But then I also was, um, even, like, before I was, like, a teenager, like, super into, like, stealing my grandparents' video camera and, like, taking videos. So I would, like, just, like, vlog our adventures, like, when I was, like, so little. And so I – and then I convinced, like, my sister and my cousin to, like, be on my talk show. And so I was, like, I want to be, like, on the news someday. Like, I want to be, like, an anchor or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. And then I studied – I know. I studied journalism to be a sports reporter. I'm not a sports reporter, but that's what I studied. (laughs) And then um, had a YouTube channel and then owned a business. So (laughs) – Honestly, your old YouTube series where you did interviews, you you literally were on TV. That's what that was. <laughs> like, that's wild. And you did own a business, which we'll get into. So that's so cool. Yeah. I love that. I love these what did you want to be when you grew up questions because they always kind of catch me off guard, to be honest. I know. Yeah. Me too. Okay. I have some new questions in a new direction. This is something about Taylor that I love about her so I want to ask her so much about it because I feel like it's really cool for you all to hear so I want to know if you can share the moment or series of events to that kind of led you to find and follow Jesus and tell us about that a little bit because it's a really cool part of like your testimony and I feel like I know a little bit about it but I want everyone to hear it because I think it's awesome (laughs) yeah so I um I guess I always like whenever people ask me that question I'm always like where do I start because I feel like it was like a like a series of events um, throughout my life that kind of le- led me to that. But um, yeah, I grew up Catholic and we would go to church, but it never like clicked for me. I didn't feel like, yeah. oh, like I, like I just didn't feel like I was around a lot of people who were like in love with Jesus. So I never experienced like that side of like Christianity. So I was just like going to church. Um, and then um, towards the end of high school, I was just like going through a lot of things um, at home and stuff like that. And so I ended up moving out and moving in with my brother and his wife. And so I lived with them for like the last year or two of high school. And that was like, a huge shift in my life. I was obviously going through a lot and everything, but I just remember that they were always there for me. Like they just like took an interest in my life. And I just remember being like kind of confused. Like, why do they want me to live with them? Like, why do they like care so much? Like, why are they like Mm -hmm. loving me like this? And it was just something that I didn't feel like I'd ever experienced. And I was like, okay, this is like different, but it just like wasn't really clicking for me. But looking back now, I'm like, oh, they're Christians. Like they love Jesus. And like that overflowed into like how they treated me, how they treated people And I just remember them walking me through so many things, um, like even like college applications, like stuff like that, like always praying with me when I would have like a hard day. And so I think that was like such a huge pivotal like start, like they were planting seeds. Um, And then I went off to college 
to Ohio State and kind of just did like a typical college life. Like I was going out on the weekends, like, and I was also like making a lot of friends. I was starting doing internships in like sports business and so, or sports like production and stuff like that. So it was like, things were like going well on the outside, but I could just tell like there was still like this void inside where I was like, Mm -hmm sad like a lot but then I was just like but things are going well and so it was just like confusing for me but I was definitely like filling a lot of voids with um, like going out with men with things like that just like all of the things that you think you want but then you get them and you're like oh I feel like empty and so I was experiencing that um and my I had okay (laughs) another side to this is I had we love a tangent here (laughs) yeah so many tangents but I had random roommates my freshman year because I Mm -hmm. I think there were like a few people from my high school who went to Ohio State but no one I was like close friends with or anything so I was like I'm just gonna start fresh like I'm just gonna do random roommates so I did and one of my random roommates um, went to a church on campus and so she would invite us sometimes and So I started going a little bit and I was like, okay, this is different than like what I grew up with. Like it was non-denominational, like the songs were different, like everything was different and I kind of liked it. So I was like, okay. So I went like every once in a while and I I would have said I was a Christian, but I don't think it clicked for me like that. I wasn't like Mm -hmm. fully like in it. I was just like, oh yeah, yeah, I I read Bible quotes sometimes or like I pray (laughs) and I like. I think that's a common thing. Yeah. Yeah. I think so too, but I I just didn't. Yeah, I didn't, like, understand, like, where I was at, really. Um, But I was at church one Sunday, and I was just going through. I was having a hard season, and I was at church. This was my sophomore year of college, and this was the church that my roommate had invited me to. And they were talking about a mission trip, and I was, like, kind of at my wit's end with, like, where I was at, like, mentally, emotionally. Um, And I was like, you know what, like, I just want to leave the country like that would be like nice, like to just get out of the country. And it was was like a spring break trip. They were going to Guatemala. I was like, I'm gonna go. And so I just like signed up for the trip. I didn't know anyone on the trip. I went and then yeah, it was crazy. But when I was there. Um, I just remember like it was just a whole new experience for me and like everyone on the trip just had so much joy like they were all going through like real life things like I was too, but like, they were so like joyful. And they were so kind to me. And I was just like, why Why are they so kind to me? Like, why are they so Aww. joyful? Like, I could tell it was, like, genuine. And they were just so different from me. And I was like, okay, like, they have something I don't have. Like, I know I'm missing something. And so I just remember telling someone on the trip, like, I want to be baptized. And they literally made it happen. The next day, there was a kiddie pool, wow. like, in Guatemala. Like, they <laughs> oh, my me. gosh. Like, I got baptized. And I remember that day being like, I'm going to actually, like, give my life to Jesus. And I remember just, like, feeling like God was speaking to me, saying, like, your life's not over. Like, I still have a future for you and that he loved me. And so I was like, okay, like, I'm just going to do this. Like, I don't want to go back to Columbus the same. And I didn't go back the same because all my roommates were like, you are like very different when I got back. So I was like, it's been a a different life since then. I think it's been about six years now. Wow. Oh, my gosh. And that is also a meaning behind one of your tattoos, right? Oh, yeah. Yes. I was like, Marissa's a tattoo girl. She has to see. Taylor has some uh, Roman numerals. Yeah, it's 316 because after I got baptized, someone was like, that's so cool that you got baptized on 316 because... In the Bible, yeah. um, for First John three sixteen is literally like <laughs> Jesus gave His life for us so that we could have eternal life, and so I was like, wow, like that's a crazy day to get baptized. <laughs> yeah, like, that, that's what I did was like give my life to Him and like receive that gift of like eternal life. So it was really cool, and, and so that's why I got tattooed. <laughs> mm-hmm. I love it. I love it. Marissa was just talking about she's getting a new tattoo soon, so yes. it reminded me. Uh, that's cool. <laughs> Um, I love that story. I definitely knew part of that story, but I feel like I learned some stuff too, but (laughs) I want to know kind of following that along, how do you incorporate your faith into your daily life, especially considering the busy world of like entrepreneurship, but also just regular life stuff. Everybody has a life that can be busy at times. Yeah. I feel like it's been a journey because when I first started following Jesus, I think it was like, I don't know, when you first find something, you're like, oh my gosh, this is like the best thing ever. And I remember being so like, oh, I want to spend all my time at church. I want to spend like all my time with Jesus. And so my time looked like more structured, I would say, and like more like discipline and just like having more of that time. And I think like I really like having followed Jesus for about six years, I think it's been like six years now, 
I feel like I've had so many different seasons. Like there are seasons where it's like, yeah. oh my gosh, like I hear God speaking so clearly and like everything like is aligning. Like I just see him in everything. And then there's seasons where I'm like, where is God? Like I know he's <laughs> real. I know he's like my best friend and like my father and like all these things. But I'm like, but like life is hard. And like, I don't feel like reading <laughs> like, my this Bible. This is scary. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, uh, this is not what I necessarily signed up for. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so sometimes I do feel that way. And it's just like different seasons. I feel different ways. And I think that's like our human emotions. It's like, we're mm-hmm. not always going to feel like doing what we're supposed to do. Or it's like, I, I feel like a lot of people compare it to a marriage where they're like, you know, sometimes you don't want to be married. Like, sometimes you have those yeah. seasons where you're like, oh, I'd rather not be married to you right now, which I'm not married, so I can't speak for anyone. But <laughs> but I just feel like I've heard people say that a lot, and that, I think that's so true. Like, you go through, like, hard seasons. Um, but I feel like right now I would say I'm – or, yeah, right now in general I would say I'm feeling kind of like, okay, I'm six years in. Like, I feel like I'm getting into a place of, like – more like comfortability in my faith if that makes Mm -hmm. sense like it feels more natural it feels like I've just like learned more about like what walking with God looks like for me personally and I think moving to LA was like helpful for that um just with like being away from like the people who like my church and my like volunteer community and stuff like that and just really being like okay like this is what it looked like when I had when I was in this flow, when I went to this church or did this thing and like was around these people, but coming out here, I think really made me ask myself, like, what is, what do I want it to look like? And what does God want it to look like for me to follow him? And I think it's surprised me how much he like just cares about like my personality and like, just like likes me and like wants to like spend time with me, how I like want to spend time, like just doing like hobbies or just like, I don't know, even like being at work, I'm, I've just had this like, I don't know, like revelation, I guess, over the past few years of like, oh, like, I'm. it's not like I spend time with God or I go to work or I spend time with God or I make dinner. It's mm-hmm. like, no, mm-hmm. he's like here all the time, like with me, we're doing this together. So it's like, even on busy days, like he's still with me, like I can still talk to him anytime. And so I feel like I'm in a place of like, almost like settling in and getting more comfortable in my faith. Yeah. It's like a part of like a big part of who you are, I feel like. And that's kind of yeah. like falling into place almost. Yeah. Um. With that, and this is my last like directly faith related question, but I want to ask you if over the last six years that you're talking about, were there any like big challenges or doubts that you faced that you had to overcome and or what advice would you give to someone else who might be struggling with faith or is on the fence about following Jesus? Yeah, I would say wait, the first part of your question was if I've had any like struggles with. Yeah, yeah. I would say um, in general, when things are really hard for like a season or like an extended season, I think that has been hard for me. Um, Just balancing like, okay, God is good, but my life is really hard. And like, Mm -hmm. I know he cares about me, but like, why doesn't he like do X, Y, Z? Or like, why doesn't he do this? And so I think that's just like a question that we like will all wrestle with, like, on earth and that's like you know people always ask the question like if god's good like why do people die or like why does this happen so i think that's just like a a human thing in our hearts but i would say in 2020 that was like a pivotal time for me where it was one of the hardest years of my life um i had severe ptsd and i had it for actually years but um that was like first year i was experiencing it and that Mm -hmm. like threw me for a loop because i'd been following jesus for a few years at that point i think like two years at that point and so it was like rainbows and sunshine for the first two years i was like this is amazing (laughs) like wow like i don't know it was just amazing but then i remember when that happened i was like okay so following god doesn't mean that these terrible things aren't gonna happen to me yeah Yeah. and it was like things don't go away just because of this thing too yeah 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 and it was like yeah one of the hardest things I'd ever gone through but also I think I questioned a lot of like why did God let this happen if I was at Mm -hmm. if I like am asking him every day like is this what you want me to do are these the things you want me to do and so like how does something terrible happen when I'm like following God's plan for my life to the best of my ability Mm -hmm. and so I think that really made me like dive into the question like is God really good and 
I'm glad I did. And I feel like people shy away from those questions and they're like, yeah, you know, like, oh, don't ask that. Cause like, yeah, of course he's good. But mm-hmm. then I, I had to like really wrestle and be like, okay, like, does he really care about my heart? Like, does he really care yeah. about like what I'm going through or does he just want to like self, like make me into this, like whatever he wants me to be, even if it hurts me. And so I think I had to like process through that. But at the end of the day, I just remember like when I would look back, I would just remember like when I, the days when I'd be like sitting on the floor, like crying, like unable to like do anything, like just really in a bad place. I remember Mm -hmm. like feeling like Jesus was sitting right next to me and that like changed. Mm. There was like this moment, sorry, there's a lot of tangents, but (laughs) I love it. (laughs) There was this moment, um, when I first started serving at the dream center in 2020, which is a nonprofit and they do a lot of homeless ministry. And so I had started doing that in the fall of 2020 when I was like going through this, um, But I remember um, someone, it was COVID, so we were, like, outside serving meals instead of inside. And I Mm -hmm. remember um, all all of our guests that would come for a meal would, like, sit on the ground, like, eat their meal or, like, sit on the sidewalk, sit on the steps. And for some reason, like, I had just never just sat on a sidewalk, (laughs) like, in Columbus. (laughs) I was like, that seems, like, gross (laughs) to me. Like, why would I sit on the sidewalk? Like, it's a sidewalk. But then I just remember, like, feeling like God was like, I want you to sit with them. Like, I want you to sit down. And I just... Like, this is so, like, silly, but I just remember being, like, but I'm wearing, like, these jeans I like. Like, I don't want to get them Oh, uh, yeah. Like, I just yeah. remember being so silly in That's my head. That's funny. But then I just remember, like, God really wanted me to sit down. I was, like, okay, I'll sit down. And so I did, and then I clearly felt like the Lord was just, like, that's what I did with you all summer. Like, I was sitting with you the whole time. And that, like, just changed my perspective because I was, like, God was not, like, far off when I was, like, going through what I was going through. Like, he was literally, mm-hmm. like, sitting with me and, like, the humility that it took for him to sit down. Like, I got to see, like, a small glimpse of, like, me, like, doing that and then being, like, oh, like, that's what, like, the king of, like, everything did, like, for me in that moment. And so that just took me on a journey of learning, like, the humility of Jesus and how much, like, he cares about our hearts. And, like, if you read through the Gospels, like, in the Bible where – it talks about like what Jesus did when he was on earth. It's like, he would go and sit with people. Like he would sit with people Mm -hmm. who were hurting, who were broken, who were um, just sick, all of these things. He would sit with people who were prostitutes, who were tax collectors, the people that nobody wanted to like sit with. And so I think just like reading through that made me realize like how humble he is and like how much he really, really cares. And so that kind of like that wrestling brought me to a conclusion of like knowing him more, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. That's cool. I really like that story. I've never heard that story from you. So oh. I love that. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, okay, so shifting gears a little bit because I want to talk about other things I love about Taylor. That's just <laughs> one of them, but there are many. Um, but I want to talk really honestly pretty briefly about your post-grad experience because mm-hmm. you've had a lot of experience post-grad, let me just say. I feel like Taylor's yeah. done so much since graduating college, which is amazing. But I want to I want to note that you had like some really interesting post-grad jobs. Like there's a few I can think of that. I'm just like, I can't believe Taylor did this and this and this. It's so cool. So can you tell us about one of your post-grad jobs? Just pick any one that had like a significant impact on you. Yes. I, there's two. Can I do two? Yes. (laughs) Okay. Okay. So my, I remember when I graduated college, I graduated in the winter. So I graduated a semester early um, and I couldn't find a job right away. So I was just like babysitting, nannying. Um, and that was like a tougher season too, but then I got my first job. Literally I started when COVID hit, like, like I remember that week stuff started shutting down and it was in person in Columbus and yeah. And so I started going to the office. It was kind of a mess. Like the whole experience. I can't even imagine. It was so bad. Like one of the worst jobs I've ever had. Well, I should say that. It's okay. We can cut that. Don't worry. <laughs> no, you can keep it in there. It's okay. It's That's okay. funny. But it was so bad. And I think it was a mix of things. I was going through a lot of my personal mm. life. This was literally right before I started experiencing PTSD, which led to mm. me mm-hmm. quitting my job. Mm-hmm. But I worked there for literally like a month and a half to two months. And I remember being so torn up. I was like, I can't quit this job. And I remember crying every day in my car. Like I was going through so much in all aspects of my life. And I was like breaking. And I was like, I have to just keep going. And I just remember like talking to someone on the phone um, and then being like, hey, like you don't have to do this. Like it's okay. Just it's okay. And I just remember being like, okay, like I'm going to quit. And so (laughs) I quit. And then I ended up moving like back home home for the summer as I was like going through all this stuff. And so 
I just, I feel like that was super significant for me because I had had such a tight grip on like, I have to have the perfect like resume yeah. and like career. And I was like, if I quit this job, my life is over. And I'm like, that's so funny now. I'm like, my life is not over because of that one job. No, not and even like, close. Yeah, for sure. No. But like at the time, it seems like the end of the world. And I think that kind of put into perspective for me, like not caring as much or just being like, it's yeah. all going to be fine. Like, Jobs yeah, are jobs. Out. Yeah, everything works out. And so that was significant for me. And it That's me- like something I feel like they tell you in college too. It's like they kind of encourage you to like stick with it. They're like, no one wants to hire someone who's not been at a job for five years. It's like, that's so not the case. It's not. And prioritizing mental health is bigger than it's ever been. And yeah. so I feel like that's such a myth in college is that they kind of make you believe you shouldn't quit. And I'm not saying you should just quit when things first get hard. But like if you're really struggling with something, quitting is not going to ruin your life or your resume even. Yeah. Yeah, I just don't yeah. put it on my resume. <laughs> so, exactly. Just so leave it off. Like, no one will know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How will they know? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But that, I think, was, yeah, just a really significant experience and yeah. kind of, like, led me on a journey of being okay with my career looking different than I thought it was going to look and just, like, letting go of things when I felt like it was time to let go, but also, like, trying different things versus just being like, I have to do this one path. Mm -hmm. that makes sense I feel like Marissa and I are both a little perfectionist as well um, (laughs) in our lives so I feel like I could see myself also being like I can't quit like how's it gonna look and I need to get my resume just right and all that stuff I could I could totally relate to that feeling that way yeah but okay did you want to tell us your second one Uh, I I can't remember do you you want me to keep going on tangents (laughs) yes no I love it okay I would say because now I have to know (laughs) well I feel okay I feel like there's so many career experiences I've had because even like throughout college I had um, like internships and I've always loved career I've always loved like pursuing something having a goal Um, but I did work for um, a small agency that actually the job came out of me quitting another job (laughs) and that's so funny yeah I feel like I I always quit jobs when I don't have anything else lined up I don't know why it just like feels right (laughs) I just do it (laughs) I'm crying. It's, yeah, I don't know why I do it. But um, hey, you've gotten this far. She's yeah. in LA now, guys. Like, it <laughs> yeah. worked out okay. It worked out okay. But usually it's like I can tell, like, okay, it's time. Um, yeah. But I remember uh, I quit an agency job that I was at, and then I ended up meeting someone at my church who owned an agency. I started working for him and his family. And I think that was one of the first, well, that was probably the first time I ever have experienced work feeling just like, like it can be like, I guess I don't know how to explain it, but we were like really close friends. And so I saw like what a working relationship looked like when my work felt super like purposeful and like, okay, I'm working to build this company that my friends own. And like, I care about the work that we're doing. I see all the effort they're putting into. And so that just taught me a lot about like caring about your work and caring about like the people that work for you. Yeah, that's really cool. And that also is like, I should have paid you for that segue because that's a perfect segue (laughs) to my next section, um, which is talking about Taylor's small business that she started herself. So I want to get into that a little bit. I want to know what inspired you to start Naz Thrift, both online and as a brick and mortar store, because even though I do know this story and I got to be a really big part of it, which I'm thankful for, I'm really excited for you to tell us. Yes, Erica was a huge part of Naz Thrift. It would not have happened without so her. Fun. Let me tell Aww. you, she was my biggest supporter. Her and Angela would come to all of my yes. events, help me. Angela and... was our help. He was our yes. muscles. <laughs> yes. I just remember him always bringing that chair, the flag chair. <laughs> yes. Wait, that's so funny. Angela's yes. Oma's, that's Oma's chair, Marissa. Randomly, <laughs> Oma gave us some camp chairs, and he would always bring his own chair to the pop-up. That's so funny. <laughs> I know. Yes. And yeah, they were my hugest support, my biggest supporters. <laughs> but um, I started Nestor, funny enough, the summer that I was going through all the hard stuff that I talked about in 2020. Yeah. Um, I had tried to start a business before that. So I guess I'll let me start with Ooh, what yeah. kind of got me into like, I want to start a business. Yes. So my last semester of college, um, well, like I said, I when I was younger, I always was like entrepreneurial. But then I was just like, didn't understand that I could do that as a job. I was like, I'm going to be a journalist, like a sports broadcaster, whatever you want to call it. So I studied journalism. My last semester at Ohio State, they were like, um, you have like some electives. I think that's what it's called, right? Electives. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then I was like, okay, like, let me take this entrepreneurship class. Like the timing worked out for what I wanted my schedule to be. And I was like, I'm interested in entrepreneurship. And I had like 
taken on clients during college to do like video work and social media. I, mm-hmm. I feel like I'm if I had an idea, I was just like, let me just try. And yeah. so I just like had these random clients I that. that I just like did work for. So I was like kind of like entrepreneurial already like throughout college. But um, I took the class and I ended up like just really getting along with my professor. I loved the class. Like I think I got like a 98 or 99 percent, like the best grade oh I've gosh, ever gotten yeah. in a class. And I was like, I'm a journalism major and I'm getting like almost 100 percent in a business class. Um but then um, my professor was really big on like, we're not just here to like read a textbook, like we're like doing real life things. Like I want you guys to be able mm-hmm. to like apply this to your actual like careers and lives. And so he um, would like give us extra credit if we like went to like did a pitch contest. So I remember doing like a pitch contest. I remember Aww. like going to all these extracurricular like meetings and stuff. And then um, one of our, I think it was one of our projects was to like think of a business idea. I want to say, um, or maybe it was about the pitch contest. But I just remember he was like, if anyone wants to meet with me before or after class, like to talk to talk about your business idea, like I'm always free to meet. And so I just started meeting with him like before or after class. And I just loved our time. Like it was just so amazing. And I would get so excited. And he ended up helping me try to start my first business, um, which is gonna be like a media company. And I had this whole idea behind it um, and it didn't end up working out. Um, and then I, like I said, was going through a bunch of life stuff after I graduated. But then um, the summer of 2020, I was like, I want to like try to start another business. But I was really nervous because I was I was like coming out of like, I don't know, some burnout and just all the things with like yeah. quitting my first job that I was like in shambles about. And my confidence was very, very low. But I was like, you know what, like, I'm just going to do it because like I want to do it and it'll be fun. And so I just started in Asterisk and I, I think I started with like fifty dollars or something like just went to the thrift store yeah Yeah. I was because I wanted to start a clothing um line but I was like I don't have the money for that so I'm just gonna like start flipping clothes because people would always compliment my clothes and I'd be like oh I got it like at Goodwill or like got it at like the secondhand store and so I just felt like I had an eye for it and so I started thrifting items I started an Instagram account I would just flip them I made some money spent it on more thrift stuff would flip it and then eventually realized like, oh, the items that I love selling the most are vintage. And so, cause at first I was just flipping like anything, but anything, then I was yeah. like, yeah. But then I was like, okay, I love like nineties vintage stuff like that. And so I started flipping that. And then, um, I had worked at an agency for a bit. I think I worked there for like seven or eight months. And then I really felt like God was telling me to like quit my job. And I was like, oh, I don't have anything lined up. (laughs) But it was very clear. Like this was the clearest time he's ever told me like quit something. So I was like, Mm -hmm. okay. So I quit. And then I actually met my next agency boss that day when I said, like, okay, I'll quit tomorrow. Oh, my gosh. That's so crazy. Yeah. I was literally – I was at church, and I'd been praying about it. And I was, like, feeling like every time I would go to work, I felt like I should quit. And I was like, oh, gosh. Mm -hmm. But then I was at church, and my pastor was praying. And he's like, I feel like someone, like – in here like you're thinking about making like a career change like a shift wow. and like I, like you need to know that you heard the holy spirit right and i was like what the heck like my friend like looked at me <laughs> and we were like what the heck and so i was like yeah. okay and so i told god like i'll quit tomorrow morning and then i met my boss that wow. day at, at church because i was going to join the creative team at church and he was like running the creative team and so then he was like oh yeah i'm like looking for freelancers i was like okay and so then i just started working wow. for him but I had a two month gap in between because we would like try to meet and it would just it just took a while for the process. And so mm-hmm. in that two months, I had a bunch of free time, obviously. And so that's when I really was like, OK, I built the website. I started Erica and I started doing like photo shoots and yes. she, was, she was my model. <laughs> and <laughs> we just like started like actually doing it. And then it started picking up like more traction, had the online store, started doing pop up shops and then. It just kind of like took off from there. It was like it was didn't like take off like oh my gosh I got a million sales, but it just yeah. like started growing and things just started Snowballed. like clicking. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a really fun time. I have to say, um, first of all, Taylor has a like immaculate taste. Like I feel like we didn't harp on that enough. Her style is so cool, and I do like when she says yeah. I, like sometimes people told me no. People tell her a lot. I feel like people would stop you and be like that shirt's so cool, and you'd be like oh yeah yeah like I have this business. Like it's just so cool. And the vintage Aww. stuff she did have an eye for it was really awesome. Is I have a question follow up. Is the professor of that entrepreneurship entrepreneurship class who is your mentor now? 
Yeah, I did his name's not Paul. realize. He's my mentor. Yeah, now. I didn't realize that. That's yeah. so cute because she still talks to him a lot, and I yeah. recognize that. But I didn't realize that was your teacher in that class. That's so cute. Yeah, and I he, love it. He's the one who's inspired me to someday want to like teach classes. Like I want to be an adjunct professor on the side, and yeah. he inspired me. Aww. Aww. Yeah. I do I have like so much. I have questions then too to follow yes, up too because please. I know Erica was there to like help you with the business and everything. So how did you go from like realizing like okay this store is like doing well I'm like selling like pieces to making the jump and like buying the brick and mortar storefront? Yeah, it definitely was a scary jump, jump. <laughs> <laughs> scary <laughs> jump, scary jump. But I just knew jump well, scare okay. if you will <laughs> jump scare. I just like <laughs> knew that I had a vision for the business and I wanted to like bring people together and I wanted it to grow. And so I was like, I want to have my own store where I can like also host events. And like, it, to me, it just felt like that was a way to like actually have people come together versus like pop-up shops. You know, you're there for like four hours or whatever, but then like you don't have like a gathering place and you can't like really build something. Mm -hmm. And so I really wanted to like build something. And so I, um, I, I want to say it was like, a year process maybe from me being like okay this is something I want to do to um actually doing it but I had I was trying for a while I was trying to get funding couldn't get funding like would go to the bank try to get gr or not grants um loans couldn't get loans um just like all of that stuff like so many hurdles but I ended up finding a really awesome realtor and he was so great and like I would consider him probably one of my mentors in that time and he would just like help me so much and um, he ended up, well, I ended up finding a space and then we went and toured it and I had been like meeting with like a developer to try and get like this big, huge space. I was trying to get like a huge loan to do it, but it just like wasn't working out. And so then I found this like really like small space in Grandview, which is like a part of Columbus. And I was just like, this just feels more Naz thrift anyways. Like it felt more yeah. like, like unassuming, like just like a little like physical space. And I was like, I can fix this up. I can make it nicer. Like I just had a vision for it. And so I was like, okay, I'm going to do it. And it, it was a huge risk because I did not have what I yeah. needed to start the store. And so even just seeing like the provision there, it was like so cool because I was like, this doesn't make any sense. Like it was a huge risk. And looking back, I'm like, I don't know how, <laughs> I don't know how it all came <laughs> how together. <we> did it. <laughs> yeah. But it was just such a cool accomplishment to see it happen and to just be like, and it was shorter lived than I thought it was going to be. But I'm glad with the timing. I'm glad, like, with all the things I learned. I just, I think at the time I was like, dang, like, I don't want to shut this down. Like, I want to, like, really, like, you know, grow it and everything. But the timing was right to shut it down. And looking back, I'm like, okay, I learned so much. Like, I feel like, honestly, the biggest thing I learned was, like, that I can do anything. <laughs> because I'm like, if yeah. I can do that, like, I always tell myself, if I have, like, a hard day at work or, like, a hard day in life, I'm like, but if I got through that, <laughs> I can do anything. Honestly. <laughs> yeah. That's I, a good point. I have one more follow-up question. How did you get the name? The oh, name. Loves that. You asked that. So, yes. <laughs> that's also a tattoo. <laughs> okay. Yes. Yes. The tattoo. <laughs> yes. But the name. So it came from um, this verse in the Bible. It's John 146. And it's where Jesus is introduced as Jesus of Nazareth. And the person says, Nazareth, can anything good come from there? And so I was like really curious about that. And so like the more research I did, the more I realized that it wasn't a place that you'd expect like Jesus to come from. Like you'd think like, he'd come yeah. from, like he's royalty, like he like his dad is like the king of everything. So it's like you'd think he would come from like a prominent place, but it was literally like a small town. Like he was a carpenter, like just all these like little things where I was just like, he's so unassuming and like the people that he spent time with like I said like at that time it was when I it was right before I had started like doing homeless ministry and so it all like was coming together and just seeing like how much beauty was in like people and places and things that were like being discarded because you know like you go to a thrift store like some people don't like shopping at thrift stores because it's like oh I have yeah. to dig to find anything good and like you know their used clothes and stuff like that and so I just started to see like all these parallels between um, like what I was selling, the fact that I was um, like raising awareness for the Dream Center and things like that, which is the homeless ministry that I was a part of. And so it kind of all just like tied together. But I also like, obviously, I when I picked the name, like I hadn't started doing the volunteering. I hadn't like really had a full picture. It kind of like all just came together. And I was like, this is like mm -hmm. coming together more perfectly than I could have ever like thought. 
but it was also like me starting a journey of like I said learning like the humility of Jesus and like seeing him like sit with me but also like going through a lot of like inner restoration in my life like going through therapy like doing treatment and stuff like that and I just watched God heal like parts of my heart and like I put in a lot of work to like work through a lot of like deep inner things and so watching God like restore me and my heart and just being like he's also restoring people and like we're finding I'm finding these clothing items that are like rare like vintage items and like I'm digging them out of like the thrift store like people's basements or where, wherever I was going to get Honestly, them. Honestly, people and that we'd meet off Facebook. That, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes dangerous um, <laughs> endeavors to Honestly. get these clothes. <laughs> <laughs> but it was worth it. You got to sell the good pieces. Yes, she exactly. Did. And can you tell us if you remember it? Because I'm like, I know part of it, but I don't want to butcher it. Can you tell us the tagline or like the main mission statement of NAS Thrift? Because I feel yep. like that's perfect. <laughs> Yeah, it was bringing new life and restoration to clothing people in the streets of Columbus. Aww. So good. Mic drop. Like, I just love that. I knew I would jumble it all up, but so good. You're like, I know I put I it on it. so many graphics, but I can't remember. Uh, yeah. Right. I'm like, I know <laughs> exactly. it was around. Exactly. Um, I love that. Nasrift is, like, such a fun part of my life, so I'm mm. thankful for that. <laughs> and I will say, like, something that was so cool watching Taylor do this, because I just want to put this in here, is it's like, Taylor was never... I don't know. She was never so focused on like this business needs to do well financially so that I can make money to put in my pocket. Like it was always so community based. So I know that Taylor brushed on that a little bit, but I feel like that was the main, I feel like part of it was, it was always about community. It was always about people. It was always about that restoration piece. And when she talked about having a storefront, I always remember in my mind, I'm like, Taylor didn't want a storefront for the glory of selling clothes to people in a store. Like it was never that. I just remember her being like, oh my gosh, if I had a storefront, Erica, think of like the Bible studies I could host and the women I could bring in and the people I could help and serve. And that was like so cool to see because it's a different approach to business that you, you don't see often, but when you do, that's when you know, like this is like a damn cool business like I love that piece so I just want to put that in because I was like that is one of the coolest parts about it to me is like that's what it was about like it was about people that's so sweet so I love it (laughs) yeah but okay so again moving kind of on um our last section before we get into our hot seat questions which are always very fun um but I want to ask you just briefly like what motivated you to move from Columbus to LA especially completely on your own you kind of like unwarrantedly did this by yourself I'm like oh my gosh and so that was a big step that Taylor took and I was like I remember kind of being by your side as you made that decision and we were going to go there together and it was a whole thing so what inspired Mm -hmm. that Yeah. So similar to all my other life decisions, it was, (laughs) it was, um, a mix of me being, what's the right word? What, what word? (laughs) Um, Um, me being adventure seeking, sporadic, a little little spontaneous, spontaneous. (laughs) Spontaneous, um, it was like, you, you were kind of like ready for a new adventure. Yeah. That's fair to say. Yeah, I was, I think it was a mix of a lot of things. Um, yeah. I would say like when my when I first visited, I think it was like 2021, I came out here to volunteer at the Dream Center out here because it's where it started. Um, they had like a whole rehab program out here. And I remember just feeling like really like called to come out here. I was like, I really just feel like like God wants me to go visit LA. And like, I have no yeah. idea why. Like I never thought like, oh, I want to visit LA or I want to live there. Like never had been to the West Coast, but I was like, okay, like that's kind of random, but I'll do it. So my friend and I like bought flights and we flew out like a few weeks later. I, we just were like, okay. Mm-hmm. And so we just like came out and we like volunteered for a week. And I just remember like, I was like, oh my gosh, like I love this place. And I remember yeah. just like sitting there one night at sunset, like watching, like watching the sunset over the mountains and the Hollywood sign. I was like, what? This is like a different, Surreal. like I just, I yeah. felt so like peaceful and like happy and Mm -hmm. I was like okay like I love it here and like I just remember hearing the stories of people who like went through the program that I was like here like volunteering with and people would be like yeah like a few years ago like I was on the street um doing like meth and now like I work for a church or like I work like I work at the dream center like I like am back with my family or like my marriage is like fixed and I was just like what the heck is going on like I just like kept (laughs) meeting people like that and I was like okay this is like crazy 
And it was like all in line with like things that I wanted to see, like through NAS Thrift, through like the volunteering that I was doing. I was like, I know a lot of people who are like going through addiction and I'm like giving them a meal on a Friday night. But like, this is different. Like this is people's lives like yeah. being changed. Like they don't need to keep coming back for meals because they're like better. Like, so, so mm-hmm. how does that happen? And so I just remember like I was on the plane home after my first trip and I like cried because I was like I felt like at home here and I was like that is Mm -hmm. I've never felt that in a physical place before and so I knew like something was up and then when I got home I just remember I like started having dreams like throughout the next like I would say like two years I think it was a two-year journey and like I don't know this is probably some people might think this is weird but for me like one of the ways I hear God is through dreams And so Mm -hmm. I had a dream and like shortly after I got back from my first visit and in the dream, I was living in LA and I was like, that's really interesting (laughs) because I felt like I was (laughs) at home when I was there, like very interesting. And so um, I just like wrote the dream down and then was like, okay, whatever. But then I had like a few more and I was like, okay. And then I would like come visit and every time I'll visit, I was like, I don't want to go home. Like I want to stay here. But then I also was like building my business and like had a job I loved at the time. And so I was like, like, I feel like Ohio is where I need to be right now. But like, I just kept like praying about it, thinking about it. And then finally I felt like a lot of doors like closed for me. And I was like, okay like I was hitting some dead ends like going through some stuff and I was like I think it's like time and I felt just like unfulfilled I was like I just want to go see what it's like to to like serve people instead of like doing marketing doing business like I just want to like lay all this down and have like a little bit of an easier like season and I want to just like do something that I'm really passionate about and like have that rest and so I ended up moving out here but it was like a decision that I was like wrestling with I was anxious about like financially I was quitting my job I was shutting down my store like it was was a lot but I just remember being like I know that I know that this is like the right thing for me and I know that like if I keep pushing through and I never do this like I'm gonna regret it you know when people say like you don't want to be like 90 years old being like oh I wish I did that thing I wanted to do so I feel like that's always kind of been my motto where I'm like if there's something that's really like, I really need to do this or like, I'm so passionate about this. Like as long as it's not anything bad, I usually will do it. (laughs) Yeah. So that's fair. I feel like that's a really good philosophy though. Yeah. It's like, I always can tell when I want to, when I'm debating, like, do I want to do this or not? I'm like, "Mm, I think I would regret not doing it more than doing it and failing. So I feel like that's a good like way to look at it too. But it's been really cool to watch Taylor move to LA. I mean, it was cool for me to get to go visit. I was like so excited to go see like Taylor's whole new. I mean, I got to meet some of her friends and just like see this whole new way that she like flourished when she got to LA. So that was really cool. But I also want to know how, if at all, LA has changed your perspective on life or your career or both. Yes, Um, (laughs) it has changed it a lot. I feel like Um. I think this kind of goes along with what I was saying earlier um, when we talked about like experiencing God, like how I'm experiencing God, like in busyness and stuff like that, because I feel like it goes hand in hand with like my journey of like becoming more of myself. And I feel like coming to LA, like I said, like I got taken out of like all of my comforts and everything that like made me me. But then I got here and I was like, it was interesting because I was like, okay, all these things are are such a part of my identity and I lost them. So there was kind of like an identity crisis where I was like, who am I? Like, what am I doing? Yeah. But then there was also this like unearthing of like things that were in me that I was like, okay, like I'm also like getting rid of old things that aren't really a part of me anymore. And I'm like becoming more of myself. It was just like a very, it's been a very interesting journey, but I would say I feel like more of myself, but also I don't know. It's it's like a mix. It's like growing and changing. Yeah. It's like I feel more of myself, but I'm also like losing parts of myself. Mm-hmm. But then I'm like changing into someone different. And so I feel like I have just learned a lot about myself and what I want in life. I think that's been a huge yeah. thing because um, when I moved out here, I remember I was like, I need an adventure. Like I need like something different. I need to try something different. Mm-hmm. 
And it's funny because moving out here, like experiencing homesickness and also like getting older, like I turned 27 and I was just like, oh, wait, like I want to have babies and like buy a house. And I'm like, people don't do that here. Well, they do. But like, it's rare. It's different for sure. It's a different like mindset. It's different reasons Mm -hmm. that people are here. And so I think that even has made me ask myself like, okay, like in this season of life, like what do I want? And I think even just seeing that I'm like maturing and like growing in that way and just like getting old, I guess. <laughs> it's no, been so interesting. Not old, but I hear you. <laughs> I totally hear you. So yeah. I know with moving, like we've already talked about, like you were in school for like sports journalism, you started businesses, you've done marketing stuff. So what does your like career look like now that you've you've completely moved to the other side of the country? Has the career shifted as well? Ooh, that's a good question. Yes, it has. So um, when I came out here, I did the volunteer program that I came to do for three months. So that was working with a women's rehab program. And that was super impactful and cool. But I think through that, I I kind of thought like, oh, I'm going to get out here and I'm going to want to like go study social work, like go back to school, like help people full time. Like that'll be the most like best thing I can do for the world. And then when I got out here, I started doing it. I was like, like, I love the women I worked with. It was amazing. Like, I still talk to them to this day. And seeing their growth has been so cool. But, like, shortly after I got here, I looked around and I would see other people who were doing what I was doing. And I was like, they are really good at this. I mm. <laughs> I <laughs> am struggling emotionally. Like, yeah. it's heavy. Like, I'm used to doing marketing. Like, I like using my brain and not using my heart for work Mm -hmm. and like that's so true it was so different and I was like you know what like this is not me like I like this like in doses but like this Mm -hmm. is not what I'm made to do and so I think Mm -hmm. that was a cool reset for me to be like okay this is what I thought would be the best thing I could do but then I had to be like okay like the best thing I can do is what I'm actually like made to do and so Mm -hmm. that was a cool revelation um And then I was like still freelancing in marketing um, on the side when I was doing that. And so I had kept that throughout this whole time. So I've been still working in marketing and then also managing a retail store, which is funny because I left (laughs) Ohio thinking I'm going to be be done managing a retail store and be done doing marketing. And now here you are. (laughs) Yeah. It's like you can't escape it. (laughs) Never. That is really cool, though, because I think like that's a really hard realization that you have to have with yourself because Mm -hmm. you find so much passion in what you do. But it takes a really smart person to know that they can't do it full time. Yep. (laughs) Agree. It's also like I feel like that's sometimes for me, at least I would be hard to admit to myself. Mm -hmm. I'd be like, I would just want it to work so bad that I would be like, oh, like to admit I'm not as good at some. But you're right. It's like the people who are around you are good at it and they should you know they should be doing it the people who are good at it should be the ones doing it like I totally see that and you've been able I feel like you have a plethora of other ways to serve that play to your strengths I guess yeah Um, and you've also been saying that you can do it in doses there's nothing saying that you can't still you just have to find something else you can use your brain for while your heart is used sparingly yeah I love that the brain and the heart I never thought of that but once you said I was like whoa that's so true yeah um yeah I, I'm a brain girly too I feel like <laughs> if I had to use my heart a lot I would also struggle a little bit yeah <laughs> oh my gosh that's awesome okay so that is the end of the <laughs> questions we have for Taylor pertaining to like Taylor's life and all of those things but I do want to do some really fun like rapid fire personality questions because these are just quick and really fun so I thought this one is a great one to start with we've asked all our guests this but I want to ask you what your Spotify what well, you use Spotify right yeah. You use Apple. You use Spotify. both. Okay. I want to ask what your Spotify day list is right now. So me and Marissa can say ours first if you want to like look yours up on your phone. Okay. But um, my day list right now when I open it, it's called, this is so silly. It's called Father's Day Cowboy Sunday Evening. <laughs> oh. I'm like, what the heck? Mine Wait, is so funny. It? No, you can go you again, say it again. <laughs> yes. Yes. Mine is called Father's Day Cowboy Sunday Evening. <laughs> like That's what? funny. It's so random. Like, it's not even close to Father's Day. Why does it say that? Mine is Millennial 2000s Evening. Oh, okay. (laughs) I see that for you. (laughs) Is there a way to find this playlist? Okay, yeah. Just (laughs) go to search in Spotify and just type in day list, one word. Okay. Um, And it should be the one of the first ones. It says day list and it will have a funny title. Okay. My day list is Hype Camp Song Sunday Evening. (laughs) 
<laughs> oh wait that's cute it kind of reminds me of i never was like a spongebob watcher but you know the spongebob like the campfire song one? yeah that's what that reminds me of that's funny that's so cute actually okay this is a particular to taylor question because i know that you love a sunday what's your favorite way to spend a sunday hmm. my favorite way <laughs> i guess i would say it's changed since moving to los angeles oh um, cool. yeah yeah because I so I will typically go to church in the morning um, and I go to church on the west side which is closer to the beach so sometimes like Uh going to the beach and I don't do this super often but ideal Mm -hmm. like Sunday would be grabbing a good coffee going to the Mm -hmm. beach walking around um, getting like brunch or dinner with friends yeah I think just like spending time with people because even just like going to church like my friend Danielle goes with me and so it's like oh it's like our fun little like that's how we see each other every week because she lives a little further from me and so we'll just do that and sometimes we'll like go grab food or coffee after and so spending time with her is always fun or just like with my other friends but I like to be outside be in the sun get some good coffee and relax (laughs) I love that. It sounds like a dream. And that's, again, a perfect segue. Like, I swear, you guys, I didn't pay her. <laughs> uh, what is your go-to <laughs> coffee order? <laughs> I feel like I know this. Wait, can I guess your go-to coffee order? Wait, yeah, no. there's two. Wait. Guess. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. It's a cold brew with a little vanilla, question mark. No. Cold. Okay, well, I can think of, you like a fall. You like a cold brew with a pumpkin cold foam, question mark? Uh, tell us i feel like i'm close but i feel like i'm not hitting the mark you're so close if i'm getting cold brew if i'm like getting like starbucks it's like cold brew with oat milk and vanilla okay yeah so you were super close and then if i'm milk yeah, sad. <laughs> it's because she hates coat, or it's because she hates coat. <laughs> She's like, let's just forget it exists. Okay? Yeah, forget about it. <laughs> but if it's not that, if I'm going to like a good coffee shop, like a local yeah. one, then I'll get um like a latte with vanilla, an oat milk latte with vanilla. Classic. Yeah, I feel like that tracks because that's usually what I would go for too. Yeah. But apparently with almond milk now. Okay, tell <laughs> us your fall drink though. My fall drink. So I used to be super into fall drinks, but for some... Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. (laughs) I used to, but I would say, okay, I don't know if you count cinnamon as like fall. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Well, I do this year round, but I put cinnamon on my coffee. (laughs) So good. It's so good. Yeah, I did that at your house, actually. (laughs) I remember doing that. Yes. It's delish. Okay. What's one thing that you can't go a day without? Oh, this is going to be so bad, but... (laughs) (laughs) Talk. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I, I love that answer for you <laughs> i hate that about That's myself so right now but <laughs> that was unexpected i thought you were gonna say like my phone like yeah, i don't know my weird. bible like i don't know a coffee but tiktok i love that for you TikTok. that's hilarious <laughs> i was thinking tote bag like i see tail always having a tote bag i feel oh, like oh yeah i do yeah. always have a tote bag that's true <laughs> that's a good point that's facts okay if you could travel i love this one if you could travel anywhere in the world tomorrow where would you travel to I would go back to Mexico. I went there for the first time this year. Oh my gosh. Loved it. That's a great answer. That would be really cool. Yeah. Hey, it's not that far. It's It's not. not. I could drive. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. What's your favorite? Okay. Now I feel kind of bad that I included this, but what's your favorite way to stay active? (laughs) Not to rub it, not trying to rub it in. I just realized the perspective on that one, but I do wonder. It's funny because I have a chronic injury, if anyone's wondering. (laughs) (laughs) It's funny because, no, I'm dead. It's funny because I didn't think about that one. Whoops. But when you do, when you do have the chance or like, what will be like your first activity back? That's actually like a good question like what's your first activity a cycling back? Like your favorite class thing? <laughs> maybe a cycling class with um, me and i'll just complain the whole time so you can feel better about yourself because yes, i yes. suck so bad it's <laughs> funny yeah a cycling class would be fun any type of like workout class um but yeah. i also love like walks with friends that's like my favorite way love. to catch up because it's like we're mm-hmm. getting like I used to do it like after work a lot with friends when I lived in Ohio. I'd be like, you want to go on a walk? And then we would just like talk about our day, talk about our week, but then also like, you know, get a workout in. And so that's like one of my favorite things to do. Oh, wait. Oh, I'm I'm addicted to hiking. (laughs) Sorry. What's your other one? Wait. wait, Is this one even more? Yeah. Can you guess? You lied. Wait. Hit. No. Pickleball. (laughs) Oh, pickleball. I'm like, you were a big hit girly in your, in your prime, I feel like. Yeah. I just I remember know. you always telling me like, oh, I'm going to a hit class. I'm like, 
I'm scared of you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pickleball. That's a good one. I have pickleball rackets. I never even use them or paddles. I mean, whatever they're called. I don't even know. Yeah, I think yeah. I don't know. I need actually. to go. We need to get into it. Apparently, I'll have to <laughs> play you sometime. <laughs> okay, what's your favorite comfort food? Mm, okay, comfort food. Honestly, I'm like a comfort drink person. Ooh, so, love that. Yeah, so I feel like my comfort drinks are either a coffee, like just going out and getting mm-hmm. a coffee. Like if I'm like super yes. like having a bad day or like on edge, I'm like, I just need a coffee, like just a coffee break. Yep. <laughs> so then I just want to go get a coffee. That's um, so good. Yes, it's the best. But if it's not coffee, Olipop is like my favorite drink mm, ever. I forgot about this. Yeah, that's so, so true. good. I got Taylor Olipop for Christmas last year. <laughs> she did. <laughs> <laughs> that's so true i can't believe i forgot about that that's so good okay last rapid fire question this one's kind of fun but if you have to cho- had to choose one book or podcast that you could recommend to all of our listeners what would you recommend i would probably recommend a book i have a few <gasps> favorites i have a guess of what you're gonna say what i think you're gonna tell them to read the book by the nike founder that's one of them Yay! I knew it. I was like, Taylor's been telling me to read this book forever. I need to get on it, honestly. Maybe we should do a book club on it. (laughs) We should. I've read it like three times. Oh, that'd be good. (laughs) Oh my gosh. It's so good. But it's called Shoe Dog, and the founder of Nike wrote it, and it's all about his journey. And I remember I read it in college, and then I've read it like three or four times after. But it's just so comforting (laughs) because he's had like a crazy journey, and like hearing all of his mistakes made me feel better about my journey. And <laughs> so funny. I'm just like, oh, if the founder of Nike turned out okay, I'll turn out okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. That's kind of like when people say like, we have the same amount of hours in the day as Beyonce. It's like, yeah. if they can do it, we can do it too. Yeah. That's so good. Do you have another one since I guessed that one from you? Do you have any others that you want to suggest? Mm, I would say there's two others. I really okay. love um, the Screw Tape Letters by C.S. Lewis. It is, I don't know if you guys have read any C.S. Lewis, but he's like a really, so. like, he's not alive anymore, but um, <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's like an older writer. Um, but he writes yeah. like Christian books, but he wrote a book from the perspective of a demon trying to turn Whoa. a Christian not into a Christian. It's so like, oh. like, wow, cool. Like, I don't yeah, know. It's not, I've never heard of that. It's really good. It's not dark or anything, but I've read that probably mm-hmm. like five times. <laughs> wow. It's so good. But then you're a big rereader. I didn't I, realize this. I am. And I think it's because I'm so picky about like movies and books that if I find something, yeah. I'm like, oh, let me watch it five times. <laughs> Wait, I have to say something right now. I just have to like justify my life to Marissa. You'll never say guess it. Marissa. Taylor doesn't like movies either. <laughs> I don't. I mean, no. I'm not the biggest fan of movies either. So yeah. I d- I'm not offended. Kyle, however, That's would fair. be offended. <laughs> you can tell him I got another one to rally my troops. <laughs> Here <funny>. we come. <laughs> no, we, I mean, Taylor and I watched a movie together at Christmas. Like, we will watch a movie, but it's definitely not my favorite mm-hmm. of all time. So I just had to say that on the podcast, though, because I know a lot of my ops are listening. <laughs> <laughs> Your ops. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, you had a second or you had a third book, I think, before I was cutting you off. <laughs> yes, you didn't cut me off. It's okay. Oh, um, okay. The last one I would say is, um, Mm -hmm. it's called Let My People Go Surfing, and it's by the founder of Patagonia. Mm -hmm. It's really good. Oh, this is another one you've told me about, and I actually am very interested. I'll I'll put all of these in the stories for the people listening, but okay, tell us about this one. This one is um, basically his journey. If you guys know Patagonia, it's it's like a, obviously a clothing brand, but he cares way more about like the mission than he does about yeah. the clothing brand. And he talks about that in his book. He's like, I didn't even really want to be a business owner. Like it just kind of like happened, but it's so missionally based and they do like cool documentaries and like, it's just all about the mission. And so he talks about how he got his team on board um, in the early days and how they like keep people who work for him, like aligned to the mission. And it's all about like building a story brand, like how he did it and like, how you can build a brand around like a cause. And so it's really interesting. That's such a, that's it. such an that's interesting excited. name for the book. Like let my people go surfing. Cause I think of Patagonia yeah. and I'm like sweatshirts. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. It is interesting. That's so true. Sorry guys. I'm writing these down. Cause they're <laughs> so good. And I want to make sure that our 
listeners get to rec- get to read the recommendations. Yeah. I'm going to link them on our <laughs> story. So if you guys are listening and you think these books sound good, head over to our Instagram stories. But anyway, that's all the questions I had prepared. I feel like this went very well. And I'm so grateful you were here. Thanks for coming on because I, I, I don't know. I love your stories. I love your life. I love you. You're my bestie. So I'm just excited <laughs> that I got too. to bring you on. Yeah. Thank um, you guys. Anything else that you want to talk about or Marissa, if you had any questions or are we kind of good? I don't know. I think I asked my questions where they fell in yeah your questions are really good by the way I have to say (laughs) you are being a good active listener thanks I'm working on my skills in that department to be honest I do know (laughs) that I I was very quiet in this episode because Erica was obviously asking the questions and Taylor was sharing her stories so I feel like I was a little quiet but I piped in when I needed to pipe in (laughs) oh yeah oh yeah girl All right. Well, I guess that is it for our interview with Taylor. I'm so glad that we got to do this today. So if you guys liked this episode, please let us know. Let us know what other guests you'd like to see or if you want Taylor to come back, because I feel like there's like the majority, (laughs) like major chunk of her life that we kind of skipped. Like there's so much more. I feel like there's so much more we could talk about. There's so many more cool jobs I remember that she had that I want to ask about, but I'm like, we don't have time. So let us know and we'll bring her on for a part two if you guys want. But um, be sure to follow us on Instagram if you all want to stay up to date on anything podcast related vote in our polls watch our if you know you know stories and you guys have to listen to these episodes to know what they mean okay that's what if you know you know means Mm -hmm. Uh, you don't get to know Mm -hmm. unless you know (laughs) so make sure you're listening and subscribing i mean not subscribing but following on instagram at we run on coffee if you need to send us an email, it's we run on coffee podcast at gmail.com and I am rambling, so I'm done. <laughs> but with that, I'm Erica. And I'm Marissa. And I'm Taylor. And, and we, we run, run on coffee. coffee. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> Bye guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.